In a land at the bottom of a dark continent, there was an era when oppression ruled supreme. When expression was crushed, musicians were shunned, artists controlled and writers censored. In a time when democracy and liberty were remote ideas on a distant horizon, isolated from the world and controlled by iron fist masters, the inhabitants were forced to go underground for an illicit taste of temporary sleep freedom. But out of the darkness came the light. From every dark night must come a bright dawn. And so it was that the land was reborn with the oppressors stepping down and the people stepping up, taking control of their destiny at last. Freedom, expressing yourself through dance, through trance. Just experiencing the beauty of it and getting to dance under an open sky. That was really the, kind of for me the beginning. This, you know, it's, it's awesome. It was within this environment of a newfound freedom of expression that a musical movement took root in Cape Town, the mother city of this infant state. It's quite obviously originates from a hippie uh, environment. It's just, you know, trance is as old as the Bushmen. That whole sort of free-spirited thing. The whole trance thing started off in about 94, and Goa started coming to South Africa. And the whole influence came from Goa. Trance reminds me how infinitely beautiful we are as a human species. This is the story of South African outdoor trance culture. After the apartheid era, it stopped and it was all disbanded and Mandela was released. Kind of Cape Town came out of the closet. Suddenly people started expressing themselves. You know, you saw, you saw 30, 40, 50 year old men walking around with earrings in their ears and everybody getting tattoos. And it's just like, that, those might look like minor things, but that was the start of the expression. And now you walk around Cape Town, central Cape Town, it's just people express themselves. People started celebrating and partying and it was, it was time for that. And we caught it just then, which was the right time. Um, but I think to try to have done a party before that would have been impossible. They would have arrived with their, like, gas and pentagons. The, the vibe in this country wasn't right. <laughs> they have shot, 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 shot us with bug shot and gas. Shot 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 I mean, uh, yeah, it's just in the last 10 years we've experienced this, uh, this whole um, this lifting of this, uh, this news we had around our necks before what was what was South Africa in the you know the apartheid regime and that and I think I think for everybody it was just like a complete relief yeah. suddenly there was an incredible freedom and I think we celebrated that freedom with going outdoors and mass and, and partying you know, and dancing and feeling our tribalism and, and for everybody that's discovered trance it's, I mean it's just this you know break away from all that conditioning and just say uh, <laughs> Back then it was a whole different movie. When I first started going to the Summer of Loves, which were out in, in Scarborough, I remember a lot of dust and very small stages. Lots of big fires and people sitting around fires and... Connecting, chatting, massage, fire dancing. You know what I mean? Everybody used to wear fluoro clothes and everything, so... We didn't mind being covered in body paint. You just had this like massive UV lights and masses of moving colour on the dance floor. I remember people getting really dirty, so especially being in nature, um, that whole element. I just loved it, so I loved it. <laughs> I think from something that started off as a small little family, it's become huge. Again, it was the first time I'd seen little kind of clans from all over the Cape come together to party. And you've got people from all over Cape Town who've never met each other before, coming as little groups and eventually merging to become one big tribe. And everyone who was there was there for one reason and one reason alone, the music. And
and that's what it was all about. Down the line it became about other things and many people involved. It's wonderful, but I think they've lost the plot. And it's not just about the trans music these days, unfortunately. For me it's more about headspace, about people getting together out in nature. The whole trans thing is a way of life. A shared ideology around the world. It's about discovering a way of life. You know, you must understand that party is a party and, and that's what it is. Instead of quietly suffocating, Charles Frank began to hallucinate. Fuck yeah! The next thing you know, a creature from between the men. It's like a bomb! Oh shit! Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Where can we park? Woo! And it's just great to see that there's so many different types of organizations around doing slightly different things, catering to slightly different markets, and a nice crossover between all of them. It's fascinating to see that the two most influential labels of our scene were born around the same time. Vortex emerged from a big rave scene and Alien Safari came from a European trance background. First Vortex was Essence of Fluorescence. The six weeks till our proposed date and we moved in and we and never we stopped. Worked. We worked and we painted awesome. the floor and the ceiling and the toilets and like every possible inch of this place just for one night. Downstairs was a whole factory that did like a fabric off cut. It's dry ice, like coming over the stairway and drummers like drumming it to come up the stairs and then. Yeah, a thousand people pitched up, a thousand two hundred people, I can't remember. It was the first big, big rave in Cape Town. So we had this huge strike. Yeah, it was fucking 26th of November 1994. After our first party, Farsight kind of did their first party. They were in Farsight aren't there anymore, but they were one of the original house groups. It wasn't trance at that stage. It was only rave music. It was kind of big house music, if you want to call it that. But the music and where we were at and what we had, you know, I think it started off as an indoor house scene. There was that. And then we decided to come in a party in Cape Point. What happened was these two Israeli dudes pulled in and they had two CDs. They let us listen to them in the, in the headphones and we went, wow. This is really amazing stuff. And we slipped in the trance and the party took on another vibe and it cooked. It was just like a whole different vibe. It was just kind of deeper and in there and, and wow. So when it went into the morning and it kind of went into the afternoon because it was trance after all and it really, really cooked it. Well, it was quite dark in the beginning. We used to have like one little strobe light fluttering in the dark somewhere. So it was good and freaky in the beginning. And we did a party once for like almost a thousand people and we only decided on the venue at about six o'clock on Saturday night. You know, we were like, where to do it, where to do it? And we threw it up by, <laughs> uh, by the cannons at our place. 